Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today, we're going to disassemble the Kingsong S20 Eagle and check its quality from the inside. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. And just like in my last videos, I encourage you to support Ukraine. The war is still going on, so they need our help. Also, huge thanks to Serge. He is actually from Ukraine and he helped me to disassemble this wheel. He worked before at the Drive Pro. Uh, so, yeah, his knowledge and his experience helped me a great bit to uh, disassemble the wheel. All right, let's start it up with just taking off the seat. And actually, I quite like the seat. It's uh, not too thin, not too thick. Uh, the rubber is rather comfortable and it's nice to sit on it. The only problem is that the Velcro doesn't stick to it. So I will need to put on my own Velcro as the seat is not functional with the stock Velcro. It just sort of fell off. The adhesive wasn't strong enough. And on the topic of adhesive, uh, here we have also the thins, which are just made out of plastic and they were glued with double-sided tape. This tape didn't hold. I had to use my own tape to make it work. The purpose of those fins is to provide more surface area for the pads so they don't bend too much if you are raking, for example. The foot plates are made out of aluminium, they're pretty light and they have these like triangular patterns so dirt can fall out of them easily. The studs are milled in and they're not adjustable like MTB studs on for example Nilanova pads. This leads to worse grip and not adjustable comfort levels when riding your EUC. Nevertheless from the spiked pedal options we've seen stock from manufacturers, these are my favorite ones and their size is also pretty good. They're held in place by these eight screws per side and they're also height adjustable. In comparison to other wheels where there is a body on L-hanger structure, here the L-hangers are connected to the body and the body is sort of the chassis of the wheel which provides the wheel more rigidity. It does take a bit of patience to pull them out, but once they're out we can see the small two L-hangers of the foot plates. I don't know if this amount of structural rigidity will be enough for heavier riders as this is also aluminium. I guess we're going to find out. For me it looks just a bit too thin especially for heavier riders. Here you can see a small plastic block and this is used to hold the pedals in place if you put them up. By taking out this piece we can also see now a tunnel in the back of the wheel which is totally unused space. Um, I, I wonder why they didn't put some additional things in there. Dirt and mud can get stuck in there which makes the process of taking out the L-hangers a bit more difficult. In the front there is a different tunnel because there is the pretty robust trolley handle. Next up I will remove the front bumper which is just held on by friction, at least the front part. This part will be also changed in the future, now it's very brittle, uh, it, the plastic fell off when I was taking it off, but in the production version it will be a lot stronger. Then there's also 8 screws that hold this piece in place and we need to remove that to get access to the front lights. I also modified those headlights uh, uh, additionally because I didn't like the beam, how low they were shining before. Nevertheless, the angle is adjustable and the plastic shell or housing of it feels also very cheap and brittle. Once we remove this light, on the bottom there's a small spring and there's a small radiator in the back and in the front you can see those lenses which are quite difficult to clean. Here you can see the panel where the LEDs are at and the lenses. There's no silicone, there's no seal around that. This should be improved in the final version. Additionally, the wire wasn't also um, sealed. Like, yeah, this needs a lot of improvement. Cheap brittle plastic was also in the back of the wheel. There was the kickstand. It broke off the first time the wheel fell on the ground. When it comes to the pads, they have a foamy texture. They are a bit squishy. I wouldn't say super squishy, if that's a good scientific term, but they're quite wide. And this wheel is already wide and those pads are making it even wider. So after this disassembly, I put on different pads and with narrower uh, pads, the wheel does feel a lot better. So these pads, I guess, are usable, but they're definitely not my favorite. 
Now we will remove the motherboard housing and motherboard cover to see what's inside and underneath. Sadly I also have to remove the remaining velcro which stayed in place because the screws are underneath this velcro. By removing those two Phillips head screws we can remove the top cover which is actually very functional. It covers two um, screw holes very thoroughly and two, um, I guess, a bit, which prevents water from seeping in directly into the motherboard area but also not entirely. More on that later. Then we remove another eight hex screws to lift off the motherboard housing from the rest of the wheel. The connectors from the battery to the control board are very beefy XT90 plugs with a communication wire and an additional communication wire for the smart BMS. The black wire contains the motor phase wires and the hall sensor wire. Now we turn on the wheel without the batteries plugged in to discharge the capacitors. It's really big capacitors. Yeah, true. Although the motor phase wires are on the bottom of the control board, meaning they're not so susceptible to rain, they should be isolated. And this plastic cover was all that was um, between the control board, which you can see here, and the elements. The hole in the front was tight, but there was no rubber seal, there was no silicone. Um, yeah, this needs to be improved because if the wheel falls somewhere in, into water or there's a puddle or something else happens, this calls in for a disaster. The semi-transparent piece in the back is there to disperse the light from the diodes that are on the motherboard. You can really tell that King Song went out of their way to put everything in the small piece on both sides of the motherboard to make it either cheap or simple. I don't know which one it is of those two. Also worth mentioning is that this is the first wheel on the market with a 126 volt peak uh, voltage system. But when it comes to the performance of those 126 volts, well, wait for the full review. On the back of the board you can see the charge ports which are poking through on the other side. Um, their placement is really inconvenient. Um, I don't like that at all. And here you can see that the screws that are on the top of the cover are di directly going through the board. Meaning that if some water goes in there, if for whatever reason that happens, it goes directly on the board. I think there should be more layers on top of the motherboard to make it more safer. Um, also, if something cracks, the top piece is just plastic. Um, yeah, I think there should be more safety layers involved into this structure. There is a gasket around the whole motherboard to prevent water ingress, but there is no rubber or silicone. So probably if you want to make this wheel better water resistant, water resistanter, <laughs> you would need to put silicone in there. A good thing about this whole system is that there are no fans and as it goes for my experience till now this wheel is running very cool and this whole block of aluminium which is also connected to the rest of the shell provides a really cool ride of uh, the Kingsong S20. So if you're in a hilly area yeah this wheel will run pretty cool which is great. Now we will remove both battery packs from the sides and a very concerning thing is that they aren't sealed pretty much at all. Like there should be shrink wrap. It should be shrink wrap but there is pretty much nothing. So yeah there's just one layer of wheel or housing protecting the batteries from moisture and water ingress. This is very concerning to say the least. There is a um, gasket on the bottom and also a rubber seal which is good and also on the top in the tunnel there's also a uh, small gasket but yeah even Gotway wraps their batteries in shrink wrap. That is not acceptable um, I think whatsoever. When it comes to the B BMS it looks pretty solid. Um, I don't know about the welds here on, on the batteries. Uh, Serge was saying they're not the best. I, I'm not really a pro in that. Here we have also a 60 amp fuse and a separate 20 amp fuse. A 20 is for charger. Yeah, okay, so this like is for the charger. Okay, got you. Mm -hmm. If that would blow mm -hmm. and this is for the whole battery. So, But 126 volt and 60 amp. Mm -hmm. We don't know if ever anything of that would survive when this fuse mm -hmm. would eventually blow. Mm -hmm. So probably something else here will blow first before the 60 amp fuse, right? 
Mm -hmm. I think the motherboard will burn so yeah. like at all. I mean, on the Sherman we have 30 amps. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mm -hmm. have more power than the Sherman. Yeah, sure. So, should be probably like 30 mm -hmm. or 40. Yeah, yeah. It's a sort of 30, not, not more. Yeah. The cells that Kingsung is using are LG M50 LTs, so these are better than the M50 Ts, but still no high performance cells. These are still uh, for the biggest range and not sudden performance bursts. I think Samsung 40 Ts would be better in this case. However, a very important feature of the Kingsung S20 is the smart BMS and it actually works. And this is the first wheel where you can check every set of cells in, uh, in, in the app. So yeah, if there's something wrong, the system will be able to see um, if some batteries, some cell sets need to be replaced or if, whole, if the whole battery pack needs to be replaced. Uh, if it holds uh, sort of the voltage over an extended period of time. Really great, although it's still no active BMS, it's a passive BMS, so the cells are balancing when uh, the device is charging to 100%. But moving back to safety and security on the Kingsong and its software, it's great that we see a temperature sensor on the battery. I think that's a first in the electric wheel world. So that's great. Uh, there's a temperature sensor in the motor. There are many sensors also around the wheel. There are fuses. So yeah, this wheel is pretty safe to store at home. However, it's not a wheel certified with the UL2272 form uh, norm um, that would make it absolutely sort of legally safe. Moving on with the disassembly, sadly we weren't able to do it the right way because the screws were just too weak. Um, yeah, they will change the screws in the production version, but here we damaged quite a bit of screws with the right tools, so that was a bummer. Therefore, we needed to take off uh, the suspension um, piece, or the suspension system, to slide out the wheel all together from the bottom. Here you can also see that you can adjust the suspension by turning the spring to make it either stiffer or less stiff. And it's actually quite easy to do. It's just two screws and then you can adjust the suspension. Um, more on that later. After removing the tire, you can also see the end side of this chassis. All of that is aluminium. Not gonna lie, this is a pretty robust construction and I think it should be um, able to withstand most falls. But the construction of the sliders and the construction around the motor doesn't look so um, strong. Definitely not as strong as the shell. So these screws are also made out of... Uh, and I guess they're too tightly <laughs> screwed into um, the, the, the motor. So if we wanted to take a look at the motor, sadly it won't be possible. It's a hell out of Loctite. <laughs> Damn. If the same amount is here, Maybe if the same amount is here, then it's not ever possible to get those out. Mm -hmm. So really quickly, just to um, explain to you how this suspension mechanism works. The, the, the sliders are essentially these two metal parts. And here we have some sort of rubber coated with uh, grease, but only on this side, I guess the other one is already gone. And these things are, they're not slippery. They're like, they're grip. And therefore, there's also this part here, which is sort of like a, um, this prevents the suspension from bottoming out and making like a clonk. <laughs> so we have this one, this one is stuck on the other side. So this one is already broken essentially because it should be connected. And we have another two uh, on the other side. And then if this sort of wheel this whole contraption moves up and down and the suspension will um, adjust accordingly. So these rubber parts are sliding in these tubes here. So um, yeah, there's just a lot of friction here. And I think that this is partially why this suspension mechanism is just so, so stiff. Uh, there is no grease on the inside here. Uh, at least not much that I can feel of. I guess maybe there is a bit. Okay, there is a bit of grease, but yeah, there's no bearings. There is no, so, so this material could have less friction. And yeah, 
um, I thought that it would be super advanced, but it's just it's just really simple and a bit disappointing, I guess. Because on the S8, uh, S18, there were like two tubular metal sliders inside. And um, of course there might be problems with that, but that works a lot better than what we have here. Like, come on. Show you guys how smooth the suspension on those tracks is going. Can you move it? Yeah, I just see it's smooth, but it's own ways, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's why the suspension is so like stiff. The the sliders they're just like it just won't work. That's not how suspension works. It's the sound of those like uh, slider parts. Yeah. It's not like uh, those. Ones. Yeah, it's just the sliders here on the on the edges. So we can't expect this to work well. With that said, we proceeded to change the tire. And as you've seen, the process is not the simplest, but I guess with uh, some training, you might be able to do it in half an hour or an hour. So we just got the tires off, and this one is actually quite huge, the Gilwear tire. But you can see that here, and we can show on the camera, the ridges are very far apart on this tire, and I think that's what what's like making it so difficult to steer. And mm -hmm. while you can see that on this tire, the knobs are like really, on the edge mm -hmm. here they're like sort of cut off and that's i think what makes this tire hard to turn mm -hmm. and what about sides is it like so mm. it's hard. very soft mm -hmm. this tire I, I thought it would be hard but it's not mm -hmm. and that's what she said this tire is mm -hmm. a, a lot harder and that's also what she said mm -hmm. it's like a similar rim to the veteran sherman like but it looks goes. beefy it looks very beefy i mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. And a great aspect of this motor seems to be uh, the weatherproofing of the bearings. I don't think that there will be any problems with bearings on this motor, even though it's hollow bore. On the back of the suspension, you can see many threads, and this is actually how you can also adjust the suspension. So we changed it from the top setting to the bottom setting, and let me tell you, it's a lot better now. But what isn't better are the tolerances on the whole mechanism for the suspension. Uh, the bearings in some places are too narrow or just there's just a single bearing instead of two. Um, yeah, these pieces just move around a lot. So this is not a good sign, especially if you want to ride for an extended period of time, several thousand kilometers. Those pieces will get loose and they might break. And they're also aluminium, so yeah, that's that. moving. And this one, not, <laughs> not at all. So listen, this is the end of the teardown and here I will conclude it all for you. And after the teardown we also switched some settings, we put the pedals in the wrong way, um, edit writes better now, and we put on some regular pads and I gotta say it's and now a lot more fun to ride this wheel, so I'm gonna do a additional video, ride video, with the new settings soon. But to conclude it all, this uh, S20 is just really a mixed bag of potatoes. But you do have to keep in mind that the first batches or even the pre-production batches of wheels are the wheels with the more, most faults or kinks, which get also fixed in later batches. However, there are some problems that are really inherent to the build sort of of the wheel. So in terms of waterproofing, um, I don't know how they will address some of the parts, especially uh, the tunnel leading to uh, the battery casing. The batteries need to be uh, sealed um, and other problems that I mentioned in the video. Technologically speaking it's pretty great, it has really some good aspects in battery uh, safety tech along with a load of sensors and the smart BMS to keep you safe. It's really not as much as a clear-cut choice as I initially thought but that is also still to change with a production badge Kingsong S20. So I hope that Kingsong will listen to some of the suggestions that I made in the video, some comments. Um, if you have also some comments, please comment below uh, what you think about this wheel. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm just doing this to 
make sure that we as the community will get the best quality so we can ride long distances without bigger issues and be happy with our wheel lifestyle so if you're still here leave a like on the video subscribe to see more content like this i'll see you in the next video see you soon